What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another VGC video. Today I'm going to be doing a, another, I, I, I don't know how to say it, like another tradition, I guess. Uh, last year I started this thing where I go over every team that I built that year, and while I might not go in depth on every single team, it's going to be just a casual scroll through my team builder. Um, since I have a routine I made this year still. Uh, and I'm just going to be talking about my my thoughts when I made them, what the context of it was, and um, just, you know, talk through it. Anyways, if you guys enjoy this standpoint point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in this video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications, and answer my comment question of the day. What is your favorite team that you made in 2021? But yeah, happy 2022 everyone. This is going to be coming out on January 31st, I believe. So... Let's talk about it. Let's let's just let's just start. Uh, I believe, yeah, this would start at the bottom. Uh, first thing I tried to do was use Thievil. Uh, I didn't end up. I think I ended up making this team. This is like the first team that I used in a video for series um, seven. Basically, this is when the Isle of Armor DLC first dropped, and I don't know. Uh, in the previous year, I had used Thievil plus Indeedee in a couple of tournaments, so I thought Thievil plus Lele would be pretty good. Uh, in the end, Thievil Lele was mediocre at best. I did end up using um, a Galarian Zapdos with Howl next to it, which is kind of cool, uh, since the Thievil would outspeed the Howl, or the Thievil would outspeed the Zapdos with Howl and give it an attack boost. And then I could like max it and go for Brave Bird uh, or max Airstream. Thievil also just paired well with Tapu Lele because um, even though Tapu Lele was Scarf, Thievil would outspeed it because of Unburdened Psychic Seed. And you can go for Snarl or Fake Tears into a Psychic or Moonblast and do a lot of damage. Uh, we had just Life Orb Special, Dragapult. Assault Vest Cartana, because Dynamax Assault Vest Cartana is busted. And we had a Lumberry Lander Asterion, um with Fly, U-Turn, Earthquake, and Protect. U-Turn was actually interesting to run on this guy. Uh, Rock Slide is arguably better in Dynamax, but ran it anyways. This team was also really fun. Uh, this is like the second team I ever made. Um, Choice Specs, Reggie Draco just went crazy. It was absolutely crazy. I forget what this is meant to live because it was so long ago, but I'm sure you can find the Reggie Draco video in, uh, in my 2021 videos. Um, it was enough speed to outspeed Dragapult under, not Dragapult, I think it was Regieleki. I don't remember, but it looks like Dragapult actually, yeah. This is enough speed to outspeed Dragapult under Tailwind, which we could get with our Whimsicott. And then we just hit everything with Choice Specs, Dragon's Maw, uh, Dragon Energy, which 150 times 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.5. There were three 1.5 multipliers on there, so it was quite a bit of damage uh, coming out from one move and hitting both Pokemon, and that was really nice. Beyond that, it was just a standard uh, Trick Room team with a Cinderace sort of slapped on there because I couldn't think of a of a decent fire type. Honestly, Incineroar would have been so much better here, but Reggie Drago, you know, it was mainly just it was mainly just meant to hit hard uh, and deal a lot of damage. This wasn't a team I actually used. This wasn't a team I actually used. This was something I experimented with. Didn't actually use. Didn't use this. This was my Players Cup two team. Um, I'm actually pretty happy about this team. I. <sighs> I think I faced Osiris and I kind of got hacked out. Um, it wasn't his fault, obviously. I got crit a few times and I got knocked out pretty early in Players Cup 2. Um, but it was still a fun team. Basically, this is just a Galarian Zapdos, which at plus one speed outspeeds Dragapult. Pretty bulky, weakness policy, Berserk, Fire Wrath, Air Slash, Nasty Plot Protect. Uh, next to Dual Screens, Tapu Koko, which something that I learned um, and I should have learned earlier <laughs> uh, was because this is when like Reggie Alecki first came out. Tapu Koko, while halfway decent in series um, nine, uh, isn't great when you're just <laughs> when you're just buffing opposing Regieleki. Uh, the only thing it really has against it uh, over Regieleki was a good matchup versus both Urshifus, which uh, my team kind of needed since I'm running uh, Alolan Marowak. If you don't know, a lot of my teams have one Pokemon that's kind of off meta, and Alolan Marowak is generally off meta, uh, but it's a lot more safe to run. Uh, than other Pokemon would be since this was like a big tournament. This is Player's Cup 2. Uh, but yeah, I was running dual screens with just bulk and speed. I think it's enough where after uh, a Reflect, I just tank like a, an Earthquake from Lando with a Life Orb. Uh, standard Assault Vest Cartana. We had a Life Orb Lando, just max max. We had a Citrus Berry Tapu Fini. This was just Calm Mind. Or not Calm Mind. Why? Wasn't this Calm Mind? I feel like this is supposed to be Calm Mind. I don't remember. I, I think I ended up putting Calm Mind over Icy Wind in the end. Um, 
but it was just like a bulky Tapu Fini meant to be able to tank hits. At minus one, it definitely ate a Kartana Leaf Blade with uh, Jolly Max attack. And our last Pokemon was actually a counter to Glacier, which is kind of big at this point. Uh, and basically what it would do is Glacier would outspeed me under Trick Room, but I was always guaranteed to take a Max Quake because of how defensive this thing was. And with that, I could go for a Burning Jealousy and burn it, and I wouldn't have to waste my Dynamax going against that thing. Um, when I usually don't want to Dynamax my Alola Marek, I, I usually want to Dynamax like Moltres, Lando, or Kartana. Uh, so basically I had a check for opposing Glacier in burning them after they Max Quake me, uh, while still being able to use something else and not waste it on there. And that was really fun. I did it uh, quite a few times. Uh, so that's like just a really fun set. Beyond that, it's just super offensive, but I did have to run a relaxed nature to actually be able to live those hits. So yeah, uh, it was a fun team. I had a lot of fun with it. I only made it to day one, obviously, but it was still cool. This was a Howl Raikou team that I have a few videos of this on my channel with it, uh, but it was just Bulldoze, Dusclops next to Weakness Policy, Gigalith, which I still think Gigalith is super, super underrated. Shout out Don Francisco. Forgot I named him that. Uh, but yeah, it was just Weakness Policy, Gigalith. Uh, dealt a lot of damage with Sandstream, uh, giving you like enough uh, bulk to, to live pretty much any special hit uh, and get your Weakness Policy off. Howl Raikou was really solid next to Kartana, uh, because Tapu Fini was big in this format and so was Incineroar. So what I could do is Howl up and then hit the Incineroar with a Max Knuckle and deal a ton of damage to that thing. Uh, so yeah, beyond that, the team was just super standard. Next up is No Legends. This was like a challenge video I was going to make and never got around to. This was a showdown video uh, where I went into the showdown chat room and I said, Hey guys, pick my six Pokemon. And I just picked the first six that were written in the chat. And Guzzlord actually did some work. It was a pretty fun team. Uh, this was an idea I had for reviving Blaziken Bisharp in a way, and it didn't work. It was not a good Pokemon. This one, I let Twitter pick my Pokemon. <laughs> it was awful. It was like the top six Pokemon, and, uh, yeah. This is actually a really fun team. Uh, Scolipede with Psychic Seed. The whole point was you could Swords Dance once next to Ndidi and get your plus one. Uh, and then from then on, you could either stay in with the Scolipede and deal a lot of damage, or you could immediately Baton Pass out to the Lumberry Thunderous, which is just really tough to deal with. Also had a Choice Bandit Urshifu and a Citrus Berry type of Finny. And then just Weakness Policy Stag Attacka. I uh, won a couple of Showdown tournaments with that. Uh, more Peko was really fun. I tried using it as an alternative to Incineroar on this team, uh, since I already had a Fire type. Uh, and it was kind of cool. Uh, being able to, to deal with Tapu Finny a bit easier, despite already having a v, uh, VMAX Genosaur. <laughs> VMAX Venusaur. GMAX Venusaur uh, was pretty cool. Wide lens, because it's a bad item. Just run Life Orb on Venusaur if you're going to be running Max. Um, don't bother trying to land Sleep uh, sleep Powder when you can just get the guaranteed damage. That's what I learned throughout playing in 2021. Uh, but yeah, it was just meant to be a fast fake out Pokemon. You could outspeed opposing Incineroar, obviously. Go for the fake out, go for the parting shot. Uh, and just be a general nuisance. And also, you know, Aura Wheel is one of the most hype moves ever. Next up was Explod. This team was bad. Did not work well. Still fun. And now we get into the Series 10-ish stuff. Not quite, not quite. We're almost there. Uh, this was a Frostmoth team I just built as a challenge. It was okay. Didn't really do much. You could kind of Dynamax it and do fine. Uh, Spiritomb was actually Heat. I think Spiritomb had some potential in the format. Basically, it could live just about any hit once. Uh, had access to Burning Jealousy to punish opposing Dynamax. Uh, and Snarl with Foul Play was just really good support. You could also activate a Weakness Policy on the on the Dragapult with Shadow Sneak. Uh, and overall, just like the whole team just hit hard and it was very annoying to play against. But I was the one using it, so I didn't have to deal with that. This is a meme team I made um, with uh, my buddy Ash in the call. Uh, shout out to an untitled folder. But yeah, this is just like Assault Vest uh, Dunsparce. <laughs> and uh, you would just be a nuisance next to it. Uh, because you could go for body slams to try to paralyze things, and then from then on you could go for um, rock slides to flinch them, and then you could go for skitter smacks, and I don't know. It was mainly just bulldoze for Metagross with a fun little spin on it. This team was never finished. Uh, never got around to that. Archaeops Hyper Offense. This was a team I you know, had to record a few videos for before I finally got it, you know, into the stride of it. Archaeops is not great, even next to Weezing, uh, turning off its ability. But as a Dynamax Pokemon with a Choice Band, you know, if you don't want a Dynamax, you might as well be Dynamax because of how much damage you're doing. 
Uh, but if you do want a Dynamax, go ahead. Click Max Airstream, deal a ton of damage. It was mainly just Regigigas that benefited from wheezing more than anything. Uh, but being able to avoid like the major downside of Archeops uh, was really nice and kind of fun. Next up, uh, unfinished team, unfinished team, unfinished team. We're getting into the Series 10 stuff. This, um, I think this was a team that I ended up using. No, I didn't finish that one. Here, this was the first team I used. Um, I used Regigigas next to Zacian Crown because you could actually use Weezing to activate uh, Intrepid Sword multiple times, but also um, Zacian didn't have the ability to Dynamax, but it was able to hit as hard as the Dynamax uh, because of Behemoth Blade. And yeah, like basically you got value out of it in every single game. It was one of the most busted Pokemon in Series 10. It was more balanced in, or no, it was one of those uh, busted Pokemon in Series 8. It was more balanced in Series 10 because nothing could Dynamax. Uh, so there was less value coming out of it. Uh, but along with that, because he didn't have to Dynamax it, uh, Regigigas was really good next to it. And you could just run it as a very powerful Pokemon next to Weezing. And then beyond that, we just have like Intimidate, Deterrent, plus our own Intimidator, plus Tapu Fini to block burn. So yeah, very, very fun team. I enjoyed it quite a bit, and I got a lot of value out of it. Poof, what was this? This was a meme team I never got around to using. Um, this was a concept I had that I never finished, just trying to use Raikou again. This Zygarde team I actually did use, and I thought Zygarde was very good. Uh, basically, we had dual screens Regieleki, despite the fact that Regieleki with dual screens was already kind of, um, it was kind of out of vogue since offensive Regieleki was so much better for a lot of people. But I think uh, being able to get the jump on people with dual screens still made it very valuable, especially with a Zygarde team with Misty Seed trying to set up coils and deal damage. And Breaking Swipe Zygarde, I actually think was really good, uh, just because you lower the damage output of like everything. Obviously, Weakness Pulse Moltres gets a lot out of there. Uh, Assault Vest Kartana gets a lot out of there. And Incinera is just a very valuable Pokemon for lowering damage output. This team, I I used it a few times. It wasn't that good. I tried to make use of um, Assault Vest Tornadus, which was eh. It was, it was kind of gross. Uh, gross in a bad way. These teams aren't finished. I believe this team I did finish, but I didn't like it and I didn't use it. Um, it was just like a Sun team with Groudon. Uh, we should be getting around to my Players Cup team. Yeah, but before we get there, um, I tried using Kingler. Kingler next to Zacian Crown. Once again, because you don't have to Dynamax Zacian to get some value out of speed control from Kingler. Uh, wasn't that great. Still pretty fun, though. And here we are. Right before it, I used a Leak Surfetched on a Trick Room team. Not great. Not fun. This team, though, was really kind of cool. So... I wanted to use Appleton because I found out that the Appleton I used in my in-game playthrough uh, had zero speed IVs, which meant I could use it in a tournament uh, and not have to be at a disadvantage because it was too fast. And with zero speed IVs, you actually underspeed quite a few Pokemon, Calyrex Ice being one of them. Uh, but most notably, it allowed me to just be a nuisance versus sun teams because it hardwalled Groudon and I was also a nuisance versus rain teams uh, because if I got rid of the Tornadus early, with like Calyrex Ice or with my own Thunderous, uh, then Kyogre had a pretty rough time since uh, Thick Fat let me live Ice Beams pretty handily. What I would do is instead of using G-Max Appleton, I would just use regular and I could activate my weakness policy and go for Max Apple Acid to set up my Grassy Terrain and just deal massive damage to whatever I needed to for three turns. And then at the end of those three turns, I would get them. I'll just give him a one-two by clicking Grassy Glide as a priority move because with weakness policy, uh, I can afford to put four EVs into their leftover instead of just having them thrown into nowhere. Uh, and then, you know, at plus two, it actually deals decent damage because of Stab. And the fact that it has 85 base attack means you get value out of it like every time. So that was really cool. It was a really fun team. Beyond that, it was just standard Calyrex Ice with screens and stuff. So yeah, very fun team. Had a lot of fun with that. This team, um, it was okay. <laughs> Not anything to write home about. Uh, I just tried to use Power of Baturnus. And Power of Baturnus, while not good in this format, would end up being good in a future format. Next, we had a Sand Team with Dracovish. I didn't end up using this. You know, it was fine. Uh, and then we get around to Series 9. Uh, series 9 is kind of interesting. Um, oh, wait, no. We're not Series 9 yet. I forgot. No, we're still at Series 10. Players got four. Players got four qualifiers. I did not qualify this time around. Did my best. I, like I said, I like to use one weird Pokemon on like every team. Uh, and while before it was like things like Goliath and stuff, I decided to go all in. I said, I want to qualify with an Absol. And 
I broke my number one rule when it comes to team building to try to get this thing to work. My number one rule is never use a Pokemon in the same spot that something else could just do its job better. Even if it has a small niche, something over that other Pokemon, just the smallest thing, use it over that Pokemon every single time. And I did not do that. I used an Absol where I could have been using an Urshifu and it would have been so much better. Lo and behold, um, the Absol or an Absol team with like Super Luck uh, plus Scope Lens with like Stone Edge and stuff and a lot of really cool uh, crit moves ended up qualifying. I believe their name was Tegan. Not Tegan. It was Flying Falcon 7 on Twitter. Uh, they ended up qualifying and it kind of blew up on Twitter. I was like, dang it. The very same time I tried to use Absol to qualify, someone else does it. And I do not. I did not end up qualifying because I did so bad in this. Yeah, don't use this Pokemon. And this is a very fun team. This is a very fun team. It was called Nightmare, Nightmare, Nightmare. And it was just a Zamazenta Crown team with a Chansey thrown on. But the Chansey and the Shuckle uh, were just, you know, general evasion stuff. But you had to deal with that next to uh, a Zamazenta and the fact that there's like a Hatterene on there and, you know, anti-intimidate stuff. So it was it was annoying and very fun to play. And then these teams just kind of sucked. I once again tried to use Surfetched. Uh, Ray with the Beam was actually kind of fun. It was just Meteor Beam uh, Rayquaza. Because uh, you could just go for Meteor Beam plus like Max Air Shoe and just be a nuisance and deal a lot of damage. Light Clay, Grim Snarl obviously made it very, very fun. Next up, my throat's getting so dry recording this. Uh, I'm just tired. Series 9. Was this 2021? Yes. So this was when we went back to Series 7 but with some retrospect. I made some fun teams. Uh, this was a very fun one. I used a Misty Seed Parasong Altaria. Um, it was able to just eat hits from like everything uh, since you were super special defensive. Um, and you had enough speed where at plus two, uh, you'd be able to outspeed opposing Dragapult, which, you know, I just figured I'd I would dump that speed in there for fun because there was no point just putting it anywhere else. I needed some speed <laughs> and I might end up Dynamaxing this thing once in a while, even though I really shouldn't. It was just a very bulky Pokemon. Basically, you would um, set up a bunch of cotton guards, you would pluck berries off of things like opposing Incineroar, and you'd just get KOs wherever you could and then click Parasong to win. It was a really fun team and uh, very, very viable. Buzzwool. This team was something I should have used in the tournament but never got around to because uh, it just it just ran crazy on the ladder. Basically, at this point, we had an archetype called Nut, which was Nihiligo, Thunderous, and Urshifu. I was tired of losing to that, so I built the same core, but with a Buzzwall, because Buzzwall hardwalls Urshifu and beats it. And it also got access to Max Airstream. Slap an Assault Vest on that thing with 107 base HP, and it's going to be crazy. It just does crazy damage and lives crazy hits. And yeah, it was just like a generally fun team to use. Uh, Rhyme Time was also very cool. Basically, I used a Max Speed Mr. Rhyme to not only outspeed opposing, um, most opposing Rillaboom with my Fake Out, but also uh, I could use a Focus Ash to go down uh, to 1 HP and set up a Trick Room and then still be extremely annoying. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was literally it. That's all it did. Uh, this team wasn't great. It was me trying to come up with a way to use room service, which is why I called it Hotel California. Basically, it hit a sweet spot where you could either, you know, Trick Room and then self Shadow Ball, under speeding your Metagross to activate Weakness Policy, or you could Max Airstream and outspeed something like Dragapult. <laughs> you could do both. That's the only way I could think of using that. Uh, this team was... Alright, I just tried to use Rain with uh, Moltres. It was fine. I didn't really get around to testing out too much. Uh, Adrenaline Orb, Dragon's Maw, Regidrago was also something I tried as a way to beat Intimidate stuff, but wasn't that great. What else did I use here? Uh, this is just another version of the same thing. This was a team I used in the tournament. It was like a charity tournament, uh, but it was a Belly Drum Kamo because... With Clefairy, you'd be able to easily get off a Belly Drum and then go for Scale Shot and be annoying. And there was just a Sun Team slapped on there to make it a little bit more easy to use. Uh, not a lot of thought went into that. A couple of fun teams. I tried to use uh, Wishy Washy. This is a fun team to use. It was just Trick Room stuff uh, with, like, you know, <laughs> self Giga Drain for Weakness Policy. Since uh, Dynamax Wishy Washy is able to deal quite a bit of damage, and it makes it harder to knock it down to a range where its uh, schooling goes away. This team was a concept I don't think I ever tested, but it was still kind of cool. And this was the Lober. <laughs> so uh, this is cool. This is cool. It's something that uh, Mercury and Ash showed me. 
Uh, basically, you would use Corefish to activate weakness policy on Colossal. And then on the next turn, if you went down to 1 HP, you could endeavor something and then they would die to the rocks. It was stupid and it was very viable and it was really crazy. A couple of stuff I never ended up using. Uh, this is a team that I built for my girlfriend for um, for the Hatterene series and she used it and almost top cut. I was very proud of her. It was her first tournament ever, but it was just general rain plus metagross stuff. Very standard stuff. Very, very standard stuff. And uh, that linearity made it easy for her to learn it. And that's why I think she did so good. I tried bringing back uh, Mandibuzz. It was fine. It was just Snarl stuff. Nothing really that great. Uh, and this was a fun team. You thought. Basically, <laughs> it's a very obvious Chansey Shuckle thing. Yes, you can guard split and use Chansey. But, let's say you don't want to do that. Let's say you want to be evil. You could also do the Hatterene setup. Bring the Chansey and Shuckle in the back. Just start setting up evasion with your Chansey. Do whatever you want. But also click Power Trick, and then Dynamax, and then get KOs. <laughs> That's always fun. Uh, this team was cool. It was just a super defensive Grassy Seed Zerka Tree on a Colossal team. Colossal did the majority of the heavy lifting, but there were a couple of games where you could get a Calm Mind off. I would have much rather had um, Tail Glow, but it doesn't exist in Sword and Shield. Uh, but you get a Calm Mind off, and then you Dynamax and get some pretty nasty KOs while living quite a bit of things uh, because it's so bulky. Like, I'm literally running almost all my AVs in, in bulk. Uh, this team was bad. Try to use Tornadus again. This is a Bulfa team I built with Joe UX9. This is back when Bulfa was funny. <laughs> and yeah, uh, it stood for Blastoise, Oranguru, Fire type Amoongus. Because you could put like an Arcanine or anything there really and it would still be viable. Turn Off Your Brain was a fun one. Um, I wanted to use Shell Bell Blacephalon. So I would Mind Blown next to uh, my Colossal. And what that would do is it would activate my Colossal's ability to um, go super fast with uh, Steam Engine. Uh, and it would also let me go for uh, Max Rockfall or Max Volkath on something. But it would likely also pick up a couple of KOs, granting me a lot of health back, letting me mind blown more than two times, like three or four in some cases, which was crazy. Stone Free was just a fun team where I tried to use um, Assault Vest Stone Jenner. It was fine. It dealt quite a bit of damage, especially with like all these super powerful uh, Dynamax Pokemon. It was fun. Uh, Superfly was fine. I just tried to use, like, <laughs> Choice Scarf Boldo support Flygon next to Regirock, because Regirock was a thing for a minute. Uh, these were never teams that got off the ground, but this Pokemon was fun. Uh, I remember the context of this, actually. At this point, uh, a lot of people were running Registeel with, like, Iron Defense and Max Special Defense and, like, um... Body press, and I think it got like amnesia or something. I forget. But you just max out both its defense and special defense. And I was like, sometimes you just break a man like that. Sometimes you just absolutely break a man. So I used Hatterene and Ndidi to set up uh, Trick Room. And then I would go for Focus Energy and one shot everything with Sniper Max Flare, uh, which they would never see coming. I think actually Octillery is kind of underexplored. Yeah, it's like very linear in the fact that you have to use Scope Lens, Focus Energy, Sniper. Uh, but I think it could be good. Its coverage actually makes it really threatening, and this team wasn't that bad. Uh, this team I never finished, didn't get off the ground. A couple of concept stuff. I used a Cynthia team. I had like a little mini series where I was using Champions teams. So this was the Cynthia team. Uh, this was the <laughs> this was the Steven Stone team. This team was awful. Steven Stone's team's just so bad. Um, I forget what the context of this was, but it obviously never got finished. And then here, we get into Series uh, 10, probably the best format ever. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, this was just like me trying to use like Mystic Water or Raquinid next to um, the Cross of Dust Main. The Cross of Dust Main was actually a really good Pokemon. I actually used this on my birthday, if I remember. Um, because it was my birthday, I was like, yeah, let's just use Alchemy. It's like a birthday cake, you know? Uh, so let's get into the Series 10 teams. There are quite a few. I don't know if I'm going to cover all of them. <laughs> I'm so tired and my throat's drying up. Uh, this was one of the first ones I went for, uh, since there was a lot of Zacian running around. I was like, I can use Toxapex actually as kind of a viable Pokemon. Scald to burn Zacian is really annoying, and then Wide Guard to block things like, uh, Astro Barrage or Expanding Force from Calyrex Shadow is really good, as well as, um, Behemoth Blade or Precipice Blades. Or not Behemoth Blade, um, Glacial Lance and Precipice Blades. And yeah, it was just a generally decent Zacian crown team with a Toxapex slapped on there to eat hits. Uh, Sfeel Team 6 was just sheer cold Sfeel for fun. I never used that on a video. This is a fun team. I used to do like team building streams all the time. 
It was just Xerneas, standard, standard Xerneas with a Sableye for support, and it was actually pretty solid in that way, uh, because you could just make sure opposing Xerneas never got their, uh, their Geomancy off. Uh, and this was just what I used in the Iron Man challenge for Xerneas. This is a bad idea. <laughs> I used Psychic Seed Defiant Phalanx, um, because Incinera was huge at this point, and I said it could actually be pretty good, um, being able to outspeed opposing Xerneas and hit him with a plus one, uh, max steel spike, so... Yeah, it was just super bland, normal, Calyrex Shadow plus that. Next up, uh, Rip and Tear was actually really good. Uh, once again, using a Reggie Draco, but this time uh, next to Gothitelle and Zacian, since Zacian covers all the fairies that Reggie Draco doesn't want to deal with. So, what you could do is actually uh, lead Gothitelle plus Zacian, and if you got the fairy type trapped in there, you literally just remove it, and then you win with Reggie Draco in the back because they have such little things to switch in on it with. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that was a really fun team. I actually, this was the format where I discovered Tapu Bulu is arguably better than Rillaboom in certain teams, uh, specifically in the Cross Dust main teams. Like, it was really good on those. When you wish upon a fish, uh, I was challenged by the showdown chat room to use a Whizcash, and I did, and it was good. <laughs> and it was good. It was just support Whizcash with special moves and uh, Fissure slapped on there because it could take hits really, really well from Zacian. I believe I like, got three echoed by Behemoth Blade if I didn't intimidate. Next up, um, this was around the time ho -Oh was being debated as to whether it was good or not, before we realized that ho -Oh is just worse Entei. And this is also the time I realized that Swampert's halfway decent as like a Yawn Pokemon. You just wide guard Yawn, Liquidation, High Horse Power. It was good. Swampert was uh, arguably super viable in the early format. These teams don't matter. These teams were Iron Man challenge teams that I just kind of slapped together. This team is one of my favorite teams I've ever made in my life. Ever. So, you had Necrozma Dusmane, which hates dealing with opposing Calyrex Shadow, uh, and also hates dealing with uh, opposing Rillaboom, because <laughs> Fake Out's annoying, and it makes it hard to get off your Trick Room, and Politoed and Kingdra are annoying. Uh, <laughs> are, they get annoyed by Rillaboom. So, yeah, it also hates dealing with uh, opposing Incineroar, so Politoed, Kingdra, and Zapdos are just like super anti-Incineroar tech, and the Tapu Bulu is where this team comes together. I specifically finally hunted a zero speed necrozma for this team uh, but basically tapu bulu with zero speed ivs under speeds necrozma dust main by one point allowing you to set up nature's madness combos with necrozma dust main to get free ko's but also this thing hard hard walls and hard beats uh calyrex shadow rider by just clicking snarl a few times on top of that it's able to take both a hurricane and a mystic water boosted uh, water Spout from Tornadus and Kyogre, and then you get a one-shot on the opposing Kyogre with a Horn Leech, and that just annihilates it, and yeah. Tapu Bulu was actually really good in this format, but no one cared. No one listened. Uh, more Iron Man teams. This is kind of fun. I just used Focus Sash Mewtwo, <laughs> and the rest was super standard. Nothing really cool there. Uh, Bottomless Pit was a team I was challenged to make. Uh, I was challenged to use Guzzlord by the viewers in a live stream. And it was actually pretty good. I used a physical set uh, with Snarl teched onto there. And it was just really solid, you know. Uh, there were a couple of games that came in clutch. But it was, ma it was mainly just a Snarl monster, you know. Uh, this team, I was challenged by Beast Coast to make a Skuntank team. And I did. And they never sent me the t-shirt. They promised me. So sad. <laughs> it apparently is just lost in the mail. Uh, this was a Power of Rayquaza team. Ended up being pretty solid. Not the best team ever, but still really fun. Uh, I was actually told by Mercury to use Dragon Ascent as a tech move onto here, because while Power Herb is really good for uh, meter beaming things like, I don't know, Opposing Colossal or just random flying types like uh, Ho-Oh, uh, you want to run the Dragon Ascent because it always one-shots Assault Vest uh, Rillaboom then. Um, this is just a team I built for my girlfriend. She wanted to use Cresselia, and we did it, and it was good. Try to use Choice Band uh, Basculin, since Basculegion was recently announced when I built it. And it was alright. It was really bad, though. You know, the whole team. <laughs> the whole team was fine, but Basculin was really bad. Never got around to using this team. This is just Rip and Tear again. Boneless Zamazenta was a funny team I made. I discovered that Choice Band Zamazenta is arguably better than uh, Crown Zamazenta, just because it has consistent damage output and more coverage options. Uh, you just literally run Choice Band with enough speed where, you know, after an Electra, you outspeed like everything. Uh, and you just get consistent damage. You always one-shot things like Incineroar. You have a chance to one-shot opposing Xerneas with Choice Band and Iron Head since you're running Adamant. And yeah, it eats hits pretty well too. 
Uh, this was an updated version of the Dust Made Across the team I never got around to finishing. I ended up using uh, Rocky Helmet Garbodor as a way to deal with opposing Zacian because I thought it'd be fun. Uh, basically, you just like Drain Punch and Haze and yeah. Palkia was really good in this format. Uh, actually, the Garbodor is more of like a, a Rillaboom check in that case. Uh, what else did I do? I used a Toxtricity team, which was really fun. We had Choice uh, Choice Scarf Acid Spray next to Assault Vest uh, Evelta, which is really fun. Uh, what else is there? Not much else. Mainly, this is just um, me putting random stuff together and just seeing how it worked. I would say the only thing worth mentioning here uh, is going to be this team, where I unironically used Growl Pelipper. <laughs> Uh, basically, Sun teams were really annoying, uh, and as a way to beat both Groudon and Venusaur in one fell swoop, I ran Safety Goggles Growl Pelipper, because not only to get an Intimidate off on both Pokemon by clicking Growl, uh, but also you can just click Hurricane and not worry about things like Sleep Powder against things like uh, Venusaur. So yeah, that was really funny. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it, and also Mystic Water Substitute Dracovish was really nasty with the Tailwind stuff, so that was fun for Series 10. I built this team with Mercury right before BDSP dropped, and yeah, it was uh, just body press curse stuff, and you can actually watch that video. That was a really good video. Mr. Rhyme, I forget. Uh, this was actually a team I built on stream and I never made in-game. It was just Tickle Mr. Rhyme next to Groudon, since you could Trick Room and then underspeed your own Groudon and then click Tickle <laughs> and get an attack and a defense drop and then get some KOs. Uh, I hardly played Series 11. I don't even think I have any teams in like Series 11. Yeah. I built like five teams and I think most of them are just copies and pasted, uh, copy and paste from like other series. Uh, as for BDSP, quite a few teams actually. Uh, I'm going to go over them very briefly because they're not really official. Uh, BDSP, what is it called? Battle Stadium Doubles. Quite a few. Wait, no. What is it called? Battle Festival Doubles. Quite a few teams here. Uh, this isn't a real team. This is just me talking about Scizor. This isn't a team. This isn't a team. This isn't a team. This was a team I put together um, to test slacking. I never actually used it in a video, uh, but I need to at some point. I need to use slacking in a video for fun. Uh, but it's just uh, Focus Sash Weezing with Taunt to prevent Trick Room, Sludge Bomb, Willowis Protect, and a Life Orb Slacking with Body Slam, Rock Slide, Protect, and Earthquake. Really good Pokemon, honestly. I think uh, it's pretty underused in BDSP VGC. Uh, but it deals a lot of damage uh, to quite a few Pokemon, especially versus Rotom. You can just one-shot it with Earthquake. So that's cool. The rest of the team is just super standard. Next up, we have Safeguard Kang. Used it for a video. Just trying it out. It was all right. Nothing to write home about. Uh, Mamoswine on Rain. I used this one in a video, and I never got around to optimizing it. But basically, it was um, Disquake with Choice Spam Amoswine, because it was able to deal with opposing Garchomp and Tokus really well, and I think it's still super underused in the format, uh, just because of how much consistent damage it has versus a lot of things. Uh, but yeah, you would just open up with like Zapdos and Mamoswine and then close out with like Politoed Rain. Parasect was kind of cool, because it's one of the few Spore users we have, as well as like a really good Trick Room on. And Bronzong was just there to be a general nuisance and uh, set up Rain Dance, <laughs> if I really wanted to. This was actually the team I used against Joe UX9. Shigaberry and Polion easily tanks earthquakes. Just very annoying. Um, and the team's still viable, in my opinion. It could be better, but the team's still super viable. Uh, this is where we found out Hariyama was absolutely busted. Next up, we have... Um, this team wasn't finished. Uh, Guts Heracross. I never got around to finishing, but... You know, it was fine. Uh, never got around to finishing Zangoose. This is just an open team sheet version. I built this on stream. I haven't tested it too much, but it's kind of cool. It's just... A super defensive Arbok that is able to take an Earthquake from Garchomp really easily and hit it with an Ice Fang. And after a Coil, it one-shots uh, with Ice Fang, and it can't miss Gunk Shot versus stuff like Tokus uh, or Azumarill. So that's cool. Uh, Yan Mega wasn't finished. Miss Magus wasn't finished. Uh, Glaceon, I built this for a video and never got around to using it. It's bad, though. Uh, next up, Ariados was actually something I tried to use, and it's bad. Don't use it. Don't use Ariados. It's so bad. Cringe Nene Scorpion. This is one you guys have definitely seen. This is just the super defensive uh, Bright Powder Gliscor where you just set up <laughs> you just set up um, double teams and then become a nuisance and just deal with everything on the field with other Pokemon while they try to panic KO your Gliscor. Uh, it's mainly just a distraction more than anything. They're like, oh man, I know that Scizor just swords danced, but man, that Gliscor is so hard to hit. I better get rid of it. But yeah, no, uh, that was just a fun team. Uh, this was a really good team. 
This was so good. It was just Gyarados Manectric, where you just have Snarl and Volt Switch uh, to pivot out on the field and, you know, <laughs> and uh, lower special attacks. But also just Howl with Lightning Rod is just such great support next to Gyarados, uh, since you can boost the attack by two stages by clicking Dragon Nith plus Howl on the same turn, and also being able to block things like uh, electric moves from your Gyarados while powering up your Manectric at the same time was just really, really solid. So yeah, a very good team. We also had Howl next to Choice Band Entei, which is just nasty. Those videos are all very recent, so you should have no trouble finding them. Articuno on Rain, built this one with my main man, Pokey, not Pokey main, <laughs> Pokey main event. Um, and it was a really cool team. I still haven't used the optimized spread that someone commented, but uh, there is a better spread for this. But point is, it takes Rock Slides from imposing uh, Garchomp and is able to just one-shot things like Garchomp, um, Ludicolo, and other various annoying uh, Rain Pokemon. So yeah, Bulky Latias is really solid. Uh, it's just a Scizor Raikou team with Latias on it instead of Latios, since uh, with the screens from Raikou, it's very difficult to deal with, and it has good Tailwind support. Uh, what's left? This isn't a real team. I used this for Christmas. It was bad. Uh, this is in an upcoming video. You guys probably have seen this, uh, already. Uh, but basically I just use a Parasong Lapras to be a nuisance against other Pokemon, uh, and just have really solid win conditions. I think Lapras could actually be meta in the upcoming format, uh, but people just still haven't seen it. Hopefully after my video people use it more, but yeah. We have an Electro team. My throat's getting so dry, I've been recording for so long. <laughs> uh, but this one is just a team I built with Mercury. The video dropped today and it did really well. Uh, it's basically just bootleg Regieleki with Screech, Discharge, Thunder Wave, and Volt Switch. We have a Scizor which can outspeed uh, Latias if it's at plus two, or if the Latias is at minus two, i.e. Thunder Waved. And with Wide Lens, it's very rare we miss a Thunder Wave, it's 99% accurate. Same to Screech, Screech becomes like 98% accurate. Uh, so we're very <laughs> we're very uh, confident in hitting those. And then we can combo them into like uh, Earthquake from Garchomp or Dragon Cloud to get free KOs. So yeah, very, very fun team. And finally, a Venomoth team. It was a Patreon team. I won't go too in-depth into it since, uh, you know, you guys can get that on Patreon if you want. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is every team I built in 2021. It only took me like 40 minutes to cover everything. Uh, and I know it wasn't very in-depth, but I built a ton of teams this year and I just wanted to go over all of them. So whether you guys just watched this while you were cleaning the house or just chilled out and, you know, laid in bed and watched it, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the new year. And I'll see you guys in the video I post next year, which is tomorrow. So yeah, have a nice night. Thank you all so much. Bye.